Hello, today we're looking at limiting reactants. Now, to help us understand how this works, we're going to take an example of an imaginary reaction. So let's pretend we've got reactant A chemically reacting with reactant B, and when they react together, they make a product. Now, we can describe one of the reactants as being in what we call excess. So let's just imagine, in this case, reactant B is in excess. Now, what does it mean to be in excess? That means that the reactant, there is more than we need of this reactant, more than is needed. So that's reactant B in this case is in what we call excess. Now in terms of reactant A, we have a different way of describing that. We call that reactant limiting. And the reason we call that limiting is because that reactant is completely used up during the chemical reaction. And we can also describe this as uh, being the limiting reactant, but we can also say that it limits the amount of product that is formed because once reactant A has run out, no more product is going to be formed, even though there is an excess of reactant B. Now, why might we want to do this? Well, let's have a look at an actual example of an experiment that you might have seen. Here is some magnesium, and that strip of magnesium is going to be reacted with some acid. In this case, it's hydrochloric acid. When we add the magnesium, we get the chemical reaction, the magnesium disappears, and we are left with a product. Now in this case, we've got magnesium with hydrochloric acid, gives magnesium chloride and some hydrogen gas, which is given off. That fizzing sound was the hydrogen gas. And this is the balance equation for this reaction, which we're gonna use in a moment. Now let's imagine we did the experiment again. This time we do the experiment and we can see that the reaction has stopped and not all of the magnesium has been used up. Let's examine those two scenarios. But before we do that, let's have a look at the equation, the chemical reaction equation. We've got magnesium as a solid, hydrochloric acid and magnesium chloride as aqueous, meaning they're in solution, and hydrogen gas. So that's what those little symbols are. They're called state symbols, and we looked at that before. The hydrogen gas is given off, and we are left with magnesium chloride. Now, in our first scenario, we have left at the end of the experiment, we're going to have some magnesium chloride, which is the product or one of the products, and we're going to have hydrochloric acid left over as well. And those two will be mixed together. Those are both in solution, remember. And all the magnesium is gone, so we know that magnesium is the limiting reactant. It's the one that's been used up, and the hydrochloric acid is the one that was in excess. So hydrochloric acid excess and magnesium limiting because the magnesium was all used up. Now in our second scenario, slightly different. In this case, we have left over at the end magnesium chloride and as you can see, some magnesium. We have no hydrochloric acid left in there because it's all been used up in the reaction. Therefore, it's the magnesium this time that was in excess and the hydrochloric acid that was limiting. And we know this because the magnesium is still left over there's some still left over, so it's in excess. Now, you might think, well, the second scenario is not great because we didn't finish the reaction, but we didn't finish it in the first one either. And in fact, the second one is a bit better, or might be seen to be a bit better because it's easy to remove or filter out the magnesium because it's a solid. It's very easy to take it out of the solution there. And we have nothing but magnesium chloride in terms of our solution left in the container. And we know that because all the hydrochloric acid has reacted because we know the reaction has stopped because the magnesium is no longer reacting. So let's just move that out the way and highlight the point that often when we have a reaction where one of the reactants is a solid and the other is in solution, it's often useful to have the solid in excess so that we can easily filter it off and remove it from the mixture at the end. Okay, now let's look at it in a slightly different way. Here we've got a balanced chemical reaction for the reaction of magnesium with oxygen to make magnesium oxide. And the question here is telling us that we have 0.3 moles of magnesium and 0.2 moles of oxygen. Now, the question here is which one of these two out of magnesium and oxygen is in excess and therefore which is the limiting reactant? Well, we can actually look at the ratio of moles in this balanced reaction. We put a one in front of the O2 just to help us along, but we don't necessarily need it. But what this is telling us is that we need two quantities 
of magnesium to react with one quantity of oxygen. In other words, two moles of magnesium reacting with one mole of oxygen in a ratio of two to one. Now here we've actually got 0.3 moles and 0.2 moles. So if we have 0.3 moles, we actually only need 0.15 moles of oxygen. And that would give us our ratio of two to one. That means we can work out which one of these is in excess. And in this case, actually, it's the oxygen because we only need 0.15 moles, which is less than 0.2 moles in order for this reaction to go to completion. So the oxygen is in excess and the magnesium is the limiting reactant. That's the one that's going to run out. So that's another way we can look at this idea of limiting reactants. And finally, let's take a look at a slightly trickier example that you might come across in a question. So this is linked to what we did previously with our magnesium and hydrochloric acid, and we've got two masses, 4.8 grams of magnesium and 7.3 of hydrochloric acid. Which one is in excess? Well, this one, we haven't been given the moles like we were given before, so we actually have to work out the number of moles of each of the magnesium and the hydrochloric acid. And you'll remember from our moles video, hopefully, that to work out the number of moles, we use an equation, and that is basically the mass divided by the relative formula mass, or it might actually be the mass over the relative atomic mass, depending on what substance you've got, or you might want to remember that little hack that we talked about previously. Anyway, what we have is the number of moles is mass over relative formula mass. So for the magnesium, it's 4.8 given in the question, divided by the relative formula mass, which is given also in the question as 24. So it's 4.8 over 24. That will give us a number of moles. Let's just make a little bit of space there so we can put in the final answer. And that answer, if you put it into your calculator, will be 0.2 moles. For our hydrochloric acid, we have 7.3 grams as our mass and for our relative formula mass HCl is 1H and 1Cl so add those together the atomic masses together you get 36.5 and if you do the calculation you get 0.2 moles as well so we've got 0.2 moles of magnesium and 0.2 moles of hydrochloric acid our equation balanced equation tells us that it's a one to two ratio, one to, of magnesium, one mole of magnesium, and two moles of hydrochloric acid. And here we've got a one to one ratio, 0.2 to 0.2, which is the same as one to one. So we can see here that in this case, we have, we actually need 0.4 moles of the hydrochloric acid to make that a one to two ratio of magnesium to hydrochloric acid. We don't have 0.4, we only have 0.2, so therefore the hydrochloric acid is the limiting reactant in this example. And therefore the magnesium is the one that's in excess. So we can make a note of that there. And you'll remember from our example on our previous slide, that was a scenario where there was magnesium left over at the end. And as we said, it's quite easy to remove the magnesium and we also know that the container, the boiling tube in this case, contains only magnesium chloride and that could be better because if we're trying to make magnesium chloride, we know that we only have magnesium chloride in there and therefore we don't have to do anything too tricky to extract it and remove the solid magnesium. So it's often useful to have the excess reactant as the solid as we said before but it's also often better to have a cheap reactant that's in excess. So for example, if we're using oxygen from the air, we might have that in excess because that's free and easy to get, and therefore we can have it in excess to make sure the reaction actually completes. Okay, so these are, kinds of, these are the kinds of things we have to think about when we're talking about limiting reagents and a couple of examples of how it might be approached in exams. Okay, so that's it for this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again soon.